in order to do question 16, any question that has to do with galvanic cells, what I would recommend is to bring up a data sheet. And with the data sheet, the particular page that you should have a look at is that you should have a look at the standard potentials table. So with this particular question, we have a cell that contains an iron electrode with iron 2 plus and 3 plus ions. And we also have a zinc electrode with zinc ions. So with this particular one, what we would need to do is we need to have a look for equations that satisfy those two conditions. Now, for the first one, be careful with the iron electrode with the iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus because there are two possible equations that could be the right answer, but only one of them is correct. The one that you want to look for is you want to look for the one that has iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. The correct one is actually this equation at the bottom, but it can be easily confused with this equation right here, which just only has iron 2 plus in its equation. Now, that equation down the bottom there does not have iron solid in the equation, but that's fine because we still need an iron electrode anyway to construct that galvanic cell, even though it's only iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus participating in the reaction. The other equation is a zinc electrode with zinc ions. So we're just looking for an equation with zinc solid and zinc ions, which has a charge of 2 plus. So zinc always has a charge of 2 plus. And that is that equation there. So we found our two equations. Now, the reason why we need to have a look for those two equations for later on is that we need to be clear on which substance is oxidizing in the galvanic cell and which substance is reducing in the galvanic cell. So the top equation or the top substance, that will be the one that will oxidize and the one at the bottom, that will be the one that will reduce. Now, what this does for question A is that we actually have conventions for this particular question usually. So what we have is that we have two beakers. Those two beakers are half cells. The one on the left is commonly the oxidation half cell. So that's where oxidation occurs. And the one on the right is the reduction half cell which is where reduction occurs. So in the two beakers, the top equation is the one that's going to undergo oxidation. So we're going to put that on the left beaker. The one on the bottom is going to undergo reduction. So we're going to put that in the right beaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to just continue the main structure of this diagram. So draw in some electrodes, a bridge that connects those two beakers together and then we're going to draw a voltmeter at the top which is connected by external wires and then some lines that represent liquid that submerge our bridge and our two rectangular electrodes there. In terms of labeling we should label the electrodes. Our oxidation which is going to be the zinc we're going to have zinc solid as our electrode and for the right, the half cell, that is going to be an iron electrode. So both of them are solid. In solution, we are going to have the zinc 2 plus ions. But in the reduction half cell, we're going to have two ions. We have ion 2 plus and ion 3 plus. What we should also do sometimes questions do request this, is to label the direction of electron flow. So electron flow always goes from the oxidation half cell to the reduction half cell. So those are the arrows indicating electron flow. We also have anions. So anions are negatively charged ions that flow towards the anode. And cations are positively charged ions that flow towards the cathode, which is the reduction half cell. And these ions come from the salt bridge, 
which is normally comprised of KNO3 or potassium nitrate. So this is the full diagram of our galvanic cell. For the next question, what is the purpose of the salt bridge in the cell? It is to maintain electrical neutrality. That is the main purpose of the salt bridge. So what actually happens is that when oxidation occurs in the oxidation half cell, oxidation means that we are going to lose electrons. So when we lose electrons, what's going to happen in here is that the solution actually becomes more positive. So in order to balance out those positive charges, we need negative charges. So that's where the anions come from. Conversely, in the other half cell, reduction is going to occur, or in other words, it's going to gain electrons. So when the reduction half cell gains electrons, it is going to be negatively charged. So it needs to be balanced out with positive charges, so cations, which are positively charged ions. So by maintaining electrical neutrality, the galvanic cell will continue to run. So that's why the answer for part B is to maintain electrical neutrality. For part C, to write a balanced net ionic equation for the cell, what we need is that we need the two half equations that you can get from the data sheet. For oxidation half equations, oxidation half equations are written from right to left and reduction half equations are written from left to right. So for our zinc, because our zinc is undergoing oxidation, the equation must be written in reverse from right to left. We're just going to write Zn solid going to Zn2 plus aqueous plus two electrons. Conversely, for iron, because it is at the bottom, it's undergoing reduction, reduction equations are written from left to right. So we'll just copy that one as how it's presented. All right, now, we're not done yet because these two equations, they're not the net ionic equations, but they are just half equations. So we have the oxidation half equation for zinc and the reduction half equation for iron. In order to get those two half equations to a net ionic equation, Think of mathematics. In mathematics, we have a concept called simultaneous equations. So what we're going to do is we need to make the number of electrons the same. We've got two electrons in the top equation and two electrons in the bottom equation. So what we're going to do is that to ensure that the number of electrons are equal for both of those equations, we are going to add two to both of them. Then now what we can finally do is that now that the number of electrons are the same, we are going to add them together. So in order to add the equations together, everything on the left-hand side of the arrow is added together. And then everything on the right-hand side of the arrow is added together. Or in other words, all the reactants are being added together and also all the products are added together. Now, the final step is we just need to now cancel out the two electrons that are present on both sides. So the final answer is going to be zinc solid plus two Fe three plus aqueous, zinc two plus aqueous, and two Fe two plus aqueous. So that is the final balanced net ionic equation. All right, now, part D, calculate the theoretical voltage of the cell. So for this question, the formula that we need to calculate theoretical voltage is E cell is equal to E ox plus E red, ox standing for oxidation, red standing for reduction. We also need to use our data sheet for this one, and that's where all the voltages on the side are going to be used. Now, to get the values for E ox, you need to multiply the values that you see in the periodic table by minus one. But for the E red values, you just go off whatever is mentioned or whatever is said on that periodic table there. There's no need to multiply it by minus one. 
The substance undergoing oxidation is zinc. So if we have a look at the zinc equation, we can see that the voltage mentioned is minus 0 0.76. But because it's undergoing oxidation, we need to multiply that one by minus 1 so that it is positive 0 0.76. And then conversely, for the reduction, we don't need to multiply it by minus 1. Iron's undergoing reduction, so we just copy down the value, which is 0 0.77 volts. And we will just add them together, so the final answer is 1.53 volts. Last but not least, for part E, we need to provide a reason as to why the voltage obtained from the cell is lower than the theoretical voltage. So the number above is the theoretical voltage, but when you do this experiment in a school lab, you generally tend to not get the same value. And the reason why is because of standard conditions. The cell was not constructed at standard conditions. So the three things for standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, 100 kPa for pressure, and solutions at 1 mole per litre. All right, so that's the answer for part E. So normally when you do an experiment at school, it is definitely, I would say, not at standard conditions most of the time when you do experiments at school. So that's why when you do this experiment at school, you will not get exactly 1.53 volts. And just to emphasize with the question from before, that little symbol with a circle and a line through it on top of E cell, E ox and E red, that is the symbol for standard conditions.